Before we get into specifics about this project and, and the, the, the future of this project, the number one question that I have is how do you find time for all of it? The, the, the University of Tennessee is, is adding uh, a campus, the, you, you've been managing a pandemic, and, and now there's this massive project in front of us. Where do you find well, time for all of it? Well, the secret is surrounding yourself with a lot of really brilliant, dedicated, hardworking people and give them the tools they need to be successful and try to stay out of their way. But my full-time job is UT. I'm at UT, I don't know, 60, 80 hours a week doing something. You're pretty, my wife says I'm on all the time, but, uh, uh, but I've got a project team that is actually managing everything related to the baseball. And so while I sometimes do an interview, 95% uh, of all the work is being done by the, the team. So you just own the team and kind of serve as the face of the team, but a lot of the hard work maybe is done by other folks. That's right. I like to talk, uh, brag about all the great work that we do, but it's easy for me to do because I don't actually technically do the great work. I just talk about it. I'm sure. Same, same is true at UT. And, and, I, and I do apologize in advance for bringing this subject up, but I've almost been in Knoxville for three years, and when I started here, you were a candidate for governor. And, and you told us shortly after that primary, shortly after you went on to serve at UT, you basically said this worked out for the, for the better, that you're able to do uh, just as much, if not more good in this capacity. So just in review, Martin Methodist College is now part of the UT crown. It's not yet, but as of the, today, the legislature should be voting on the money to make that a possibility. Then we have several other steps left to go. Board, boards have to confirm, uh, the Methodist Church has to confirm, SAC COC, the crediting agency, has to confirm, but we feel really confident that all those things will happen. And so as of July 1, Martin Methodist College will become the fourth undergraduate campus for the University of Tennessee, and now be called UT Southern. First one in more than 50 years. In more than 50 years. So you, you, you've got that added to your to your list of things you've, you've gotten done. Uh, you, you navigated a pandemic, a once in a, a generation pandemic, and now there, there is a joint city-county sports authority. The legislature is passing legislation to support this stadium. Uh, I, I guess looking back, are you glad things turned out the way they did? No, I couldn't be happier. I always say, you know, God has a better plan for you than you do for yourself. I thought I wanted to be governor, but uh, within weeks I found the better place. I can serve my state through the University of Tennessee. People don't realize, I don't think I realize, just how much uh, influence for good that the University of Tennessee has in every county in the state. So if you want to make a difference in your state, I don't think there's a better place than being at the University of Tennessee. So I have that, but then I also have the personal advantage of living in my hometown, 10 miles away from my two granddaughters. Uh, so um, I'm blessed. So we're here, we're here. Where is home plate? My biggest question is where is home plate? So home plate will be about where that big hole is that you see just straight ahead, where the black wall is. Uh, so, so we're about the center of that block and the, the baseball stadium will be facing that direction. Baseball stadium facing yeah. this direction. Yeah, the, um, the yellow scooper, as my granddaughter would call it, is uh, around first place, a first base. Is it not a scooper? No. I think actually the technical word would be excavator, but I'm not exactly sure either. There we go. There we go. So um, why, why do this? Because I, I, I've been to Kodak. I, I, I always enjoy a Smokies game. And um, I guess I know you see a payoff for the city. We'll talk about that. But what, what is the payoff for the Smokies uh, and, and for Boyd Sports? Why do this? Well, frankly, financially, it's a big risk. So we've got a very attractive uh, lease payment in uh, Kodak. We pay $300,000 a year, and the city and county pay all the utilities. When we come to Knoxville, we'll be paying probably three times that or more and be in charge of the utilities. Those things haven't been negotiated, but it'll be much more expensive to be here. But I guess you have to start with why I got involved in baseball in the first place. I love baseball partially because of the sport, but also because of what it does for a community. I've been to 45 Major League ballparks all across the country. And the one thing that they do is bring people together. If you go to a ballpark, people, young and old, black and white, rich and poor, all come to a game. It connects people. And I think the world needs more venues where people can be connected and brought together. So I've always loved that about baseball. And baseball should be played downtown. My favorite baseball stadiums are like Wrigley, in uh, Chicago or Fenway in Boston. 
go to those places and the whole community uh, around it is a, a part of the, um, uh, the, the total experience. And we want to do that here. We want to create not just a ballpark, not just a place to play baseball, but an entire community that has a unique vibe and feel to it that can be another anchor to our city. Anchor to our city. I've heard it referred to as an anchor, a final piece of the downtown puzzle or, or a bookend. Yeah. Um, is that what this will be, or um, do you think this has more potential to be no. maybe the more desirable? Yeah, no, I, no, I wouldn't describe it as a bookend, because that would be selling it short. What has happened in Knoxville, when they built the James White Parkway, we built this barrier, this wall, between East Knoxville and downtown. And the idea behind this project, is, in this location, is just to knock down that wall and to build a bridge to East Knoxville. We hope that, in addition to the economic impact that we'll have in this little area here, It'll be a catalyst to build development for miles further out and hopefully enrich and provide opportunities and jobs for people in a part of town that has been neglected for years. That acknowledgement of what James White Parkway did to East Knoxville, just that acknowledgement alone probably means a lot to a lot of people. You know, because the impact is, is you know, the way it's described to me is that impact is felt every day. No, it's going to be economic uh, because it's going to bring jobs, it's going to bring new businesses to this area and provide a, a stimulus for other businesses to continue to grow in the adjacent areas. But it also we want it to have a social impact. We're, we've worked with Renee Kessler at the Beck Cultural Center. We're going to be really intentional about making sure that it also celebrates our history in East Knoxville and also can be a, a, a path to the future. And so that's one of the, uh, I think it's not just economic, it's also social and cultural as well. I want to um, maybe, I don't know that we can move any closer because of the, um, the noise, but maybe just switch up some shots. Yeah, whatever you think. Okay. Yeah, we can get in the middle there and... Um, yeah, do you want to get ahead of us? Then, yeah, you want to get ahead of us? What were you saying? Every now and then, I, I'll, I, uh, about every other day or so, I'll drive down here and park and just watch uh, some of the, the, the excavators and scoopers knock concrete down. For the longest time, it was just guys in suits getting little small pieces and carrying them out. But just like any little boy, it's kind of fun seeing big pieces of concrete being crushed. How often are you out here watching? Uh, maybe once every two days. Oh, wow. But watching is for maybe five minutes. If I get to make a phone call, I can make a phone call in my car watching excavation that I ask just as easily as I can sitting in my office at Andy Old Tower. So, and you obviously, I mean, this is your land, and you're 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 willing to give it away, uh, and then pay to uh, to have have ball on, on this uh, facility, and and your team is behind getting the private investment commitments, right? Yes, all I mean, that would be true. All of that would be true. I mean, has anything like that been done in the sports world before? That's a good question. I don't really know, uh, but you know, as I think about this project. You know, there's only a few ch chances in your life that you get a chance to make a, an impact. You know, I got an opportunity working with Governor Haslam to create the Tennessee, help him create the Tennessee Promise, um, which is something I've always been very proud of. Working with the University of Tennessee, being able to create a new university in Southern Middle Tennessee to provide an opportunity for a better, more affordable education in an entire region of the state for generations. You don't get a chance to do that very often. Working with a, a really great group of people on this project, uh, we can transform my hometown. And so when you have an opportunity like that, you have to seize it. So this is a lot more, I mean, obviously you're in business. You don't want to start seeing that, that uh, going in the, in the, is it the black when you're going under? Uh, no, that would be in the red. Okay, so. in the red. Okay, you don't want to go in the red, but you're saying this is more about profits and numbers. This is about <coughs> lasting, a lasting footprint. Right. I think for myself and all of our investors, if we just wanted to make money, we'd just put our money in the stock market and sit back and relax. This is a chance to make a difference in our community. And that I can say to the person, everybody that's involved in this project, uh, that's their primary purpose and passion. I want to talk about uh, East Knoxville uh, because, well, I mean, you've already brought it up. They talk about this site as being, I spoke to Theotis Robinson last week. He talks about this site as being on the ashes of urban renewal and, and, and forcing people kind of out. Um, and, but he, he, he supports this project if it can benefit everybody. Um, talk to me about your commitment to make sure that happens. What's that look like? <coughs> well, we want to be very intentional about bringing in the history of the area and, and celebrating that. And one of the uh, 
the uh, Negro baseball teams here for years, for decades, was the uh, Knoxville Giants. We're going to celebrate equally the Knoxville Smokies and the Knoxville Giants in statues and in signage and the namings of buildings. We're going to make it accessible to the community for lots of family reunions and other cultural events. So we want to make it a part of the community. With regards to its history, so urban renewal destroyed a lot of this, the, the, the history of this community. Uh, but this particular site uh, uh, predated uh, urban renewal. The, the uh, Lay's Packing Company was built here in 1921. So the site that we're looking at where the baseball stadium is has been a packing company 40 years before urban renewal began. And urban renewal de uh, destroyed communities all around the site, but not this particular site. Well, just the, I, well, that's good to know because I knew there was a meat packing plant and I thought, so were these neighborhoods, because I was told there was a school here at one point, and there was uh, maybe uh, some housing here at one point. Is that? Not before 1921. Okay. The, the packing company was built in 1921. I don't know what was there before 20, 1921. Okay. But urban renewal uh, happened in 1960. So, and, and, you know, Mr. Robinson had a lot to do with the World's Fair. He said they were able to, to make sure that enough uh, vendors were, were black, the contractors from start to finish. and. And the people <coughs> earning money at the World's Fair, that, that it was, everybody had their fair share. Uh, is that gonna happen with this project? Yeah, we're determined to make it so. You know, the president of Jim Development, uh, there's about half a dozen investors in Jim Development. Our president is Steve Davis, who grew up in East Knoxville, who is African American. He's committed to making sure, as we all are, that uh, uh, minority businesses have uh, 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 opportunities in this project. We're working with the Knox Area Urban League to work on apprenticeship programs, on job training programs to help us identify minority contractors. And I think more importantly, too often people talk about getting minority businesses to help you with the construction. Well, the construction is going to be done in two to three years. That's very short term. What the real opportunity is, is helping, helping uh, businesses from the community be a part of this, this, this uh, uh, enterprise. Uh, some businesses that are already in the community might want to expand and have an additional location here, but there also may be some young entrepreneurs, like maybe I was 40 years ago, that have an idea and want to start a, a restaurant or a dry cleaning business or, or whatever other type of business might fit within the area. You know, Nashville did a, um, a community benefits agreement for the soccer stadium, and um, I mean, we'll see how everything kind of pans out, but is that something you think, Jim, development, and, and you're open to? Actually, we'd like to do one, one better. Uh, we're not going to have somebody mandate a few fixed things. We're going to do more than Nashville ever imagined doing it. We're going to do it uh, proactively and voluntarily. And we're already beginning a, a whole range of things. And for example, working with Knox Area Urban League, we're already giving them a target of helping us hit 15% minority participation in the contracting. There's no reason for us to, there's no reason for somebody to mandate to do it for us to do good. We're going to do good and we're going to do it in advance. You're ahead of it. Yes, that's what you're saying. Um, all right, we can switch up that shot now. I just, uh, full of questions here. Uh, did you want to, did you want to walk or? Yeah, we can walk like. Oh, sure. Okay. Okay. Um, what are you going to do with the water tower? I'm going to put it, it's going to be a fixture of the uh, baseball stadium. So there's a plan to take the water tower and put it on top of one of the buildings so we can kind of recreate what it used to be. Oh, I feel like I've seen that in the plans, yeah. or at least the shape. Yeah. At that, least that's the intention. Now, some uh, people in construction and architecture might have some different thoughts later on, but the concept, concept is to have the water tower as part of it. We uh, want this to look like the old city. So when you walk from the old city with all the brick buildings and the warehouses, and you walk to this side, you, you'll feel like you never left. And it'll look like it's been here for 100 years, except it'll be in good condition. So it'll be brick, it'll look like and feel like Knoxville. And we want it to feel like a community. So there's going to be close to 600 apartments and condos surrounding it, retail, commercial. Um, and we want to be a, a vibrant uh, epicenter of the city. Well, and you're, you're pretty confident. It seems everyone's pretty confident. We're sort of talking about this like it's a foregone conclusion. How confident are you that uh, you know, city and county leaders are going to sign off? Well, I wouldn't say I'm confident, but I'm hopeful. But so far, we've gotten a lot of support. You know, at the state level, the House voted 71 to 10 in favor of supporting the project. At the Senate, they voted 27 to 0 in, in favor of the project. Uh, in the County Commission, we've had three different votes 
on different steps to get us along the way. And the total vote count is 33 to zero. In the, the uh, city council, we've had three separate votes and the count would be 24 to two to one, one abstention. Um, and so it feels like there's a lot of momentum. And when we talk to people across the community, it feels like there's a lot of support. The mayors are very, very supportive, but we still have steps to do. We still have to get the actual cost. The city has got to make sure that, that cost is in line with their estimates and then they have to approve the bond and go out and get a bond. Um, so there's a lot of work left to do between now and when we can say that we're surely moving forward. Is this the best time to do something like this with like interest rates and, and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. If you were wanting to make a, a, a significant investment, either on the private side or the public side, there's never been a better time. Interest rates are at historic lows. And so the financing that you're going to do um, you can never get this type of financing. We've, it's one of the best times in, in history to get uh, financing on a long-term project. So leaders in Sevierville, do they hate you or what? I mean, I mean I'm joking, but what, what is no, the future we, of that side? We, we, we have great relationships with all the leaders in, in Sevierville and Sevier County. Um, we've been talking about this possibility for three or four years. They're sad to see us go. We both have had a great relationship. Uh, we have no complaints with either the people of Sevier County or the leadership in Seville County. It made us a, it's been a great partnership. Uh, but they understand that this makes sense for us. And they've got some very valuable land that the stadium is on, right next to the interstate. It's done its job. Because of the stadium, there's all kinds of retail around exit 407. Now that if the stadium leaves, there's an opportunity for them to invest in more, re or have other private businesses invest in more retail, which will probably generate them more sales tax dollars. And you know, feel free to say none of your business, but you're going to lease the stadium, a publicly owned stadium, and the, the, the land surrounding it is yours currently, right? The That's land right. that the private development will be on. How much of this will be yours? Will any of it be yours when it's all done other than the team? Well, so there's roughly about 14 acres and roughly half will be provided to the, the sports authority and the other half gym development will develop the apartments and the retail and the commercial. So I'll have a stake of the ownership of gym development. Gotcha, gotcha. So part of that will be, part of that will be yours, but it will be leased by uh, businesses, uh, the folks running the apartment complex, those kind of right. places. Gotcha. Okay. So, but the bulk, it, well, at least half, you're giving up. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, I am, I am running out of questions here, but I, 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 I took some down. Um, Timeline-wise, do you, do you see things, um, if all goes well in the, in the months ahead, do you see things? Um, well, well, there's two timelines. My timeline is that we start construction late summer and finish, as uh, to say, uh, play ball in the spring of 2023. But everybody in construction and the architects all say it'll probably be spring of 2024. So we'll have to see what happens, but we're pushing for 2023, but the probability is because of the scope and scale of the project, it'll be spring of 2024. Spring of 2024. Talk to me about, um, so I've never owned a baseball stadium, it probably doesn't surprise you, or a baseball team. So the fact that the Smokies are a Cubs affiliate, double-A Cubs affiliate, isn't that um, just another advantage to your team? Yeah, it's a huge advantage to having an affiliate that is actually popular. So, <coughs> you know, there's other other uh, teams that are affiliated, say, with the Arizona Diamondbacks or the Seattle Mariners. Those are good teams, but they don't have any fans in e the eastern part of the United States. The top three franchises in baseball would be the Yankees and the Cubs and the Dodgers. They have, <coughs> excuse me, huge followings, and so to be uh, a, an affiliate of the Cubs is a huge extra benefit. We've got a much stronger relationship with Major League Baseball now. There'll be new revenue sharing opportunities. Um, we'll have longer contracts with our teams before every two or four years your affiliation could change. And it often did. That's why the, the Tennessee Smokies have been White Sox affiliates, uh, Toronto Blue Jays affiliates, um, Cardinals affiliates. But it's the Cubs is the best affiliate that we could possibly have for this market. They've got such a huge following, so we're really happy with the current situation with Major League Baseball. I know you said this is going to kind of look like a continuation of the old city, but how much is it going to look like Wrigleyville? We're going to try to make it look like Wrigleyville as much as possible. The apartments and the buildings around it, we plan on putting bleachers uh, on 
some level so that people could sit and look into the stadium. They'll have rooftops. So there'll be a lot of ways in which the surrounding community is all part of the baseball, or the, the sports complex. I keep using the word baseball, but we also plan on having soccer, family reunions. We plan on having events 350 days a year there. How will that work? Um, oh, that was a big chunk of uh, concrete <coughs> there. And, and, and if this dust is too much, we no, can that's, move. That's okay. Um, this could be a great scene. I, Randy Boyd's last words is a slab of concrete landed on <laughs> my first in-person interview without a mask on and we die. Uh, no. um, you, uh, okay, so you were talking about the multi-use aspect and, and we, we should do a better job of being, we're being correct, but we should be more correct maybe in that we're, we're calling it a baseball stadium, but it, it has potential for a lot yeah, more. No, this is, yeah, this is a, a sports and entertainment complex. We're gonna design it so that it's uh, uh, for concerts. The baseball stadium that we have now is not situated to really host concerts well. This one is going to be purposely designed so we can host outdoor concerts. It'll have a 7,000 seat uh, 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 venue for some really great uh, acts that we'll be able to bring in that we can't fit any place else in the community. We'll have uh, hopefully a, a relationship with the soccer team. We plan on having uh, state uh, baseball tournaments, bringing people in that'll spend the weekend here in, in Knoxville, spending money at our hotels and our restaurants while they're watching baseball. We'll have family reunions. We have a, a, a organization that's wanting to have over 100 family reunions a year uh, on the facility. We'll have farmer's markets. A whole range of activities will be uh, at this at site. And we plan on keeping the concourses open uh, year round. So if you just want to you work downtown, you want to take a walk in the middle of the afternoon, you can come and walk around the concourse at the, at the baseball stadium. Have your lunch sitting in a seat at the baseball stadium. It's a neat. It's a neat concept, and I don't. I don't know that it's been done. Maybe, maybe it has, but it's a neat concept. So, and, and that helps me understand too. You're actually going to lease the stadium, so marketing uh, events, uh, marketing concerts, all that will be handled by Boyd Sports. Yeah. So typically, the way a baseball team or an organization will manage a stadium, um, the the city and the county, a public entity, will own the stadium, and then we're just leasing it from them. So we'll pay a a, a yearly lease. They will also have a contract to manage the stadium and bring in other activities. And there'll probably be some agreement to provide a certain amount of activities for the city and county to be to be able to do their own things on, on the property as well. Gotcha. And I, I heard you say something about private development. You want to walk a little further down? You want to walk a little further down? Is that what you're thinking? We'll let Sean get ahead of us a little bit. So I've been reporting more than $100 million, and then I see 130 and 140. So how much private investment have y'all secured? So we've got, we've got the funding to do uh, up to $150 million, but now we're making sure that we have commercially viable projects that people want to, to rent. So we're working through that now. <coughs> but we, we don't know the exact amount, but it'll be north of 80 million, but up to 150 million. But that will, the, that's the amount of investment that we think we can fit within this 14 acres, or the actual is seven additional acres outside of the stadium. But that doesn't count everything else around us that would go up. We hope that maybe some other people that own land nearby will put up hotels, which there's rumors that that could happen. Uh, but there's a lot of other people that we know that are speculating about other opportunities all around the area. That Greyhound station, whoever buys that, <coughs> I mean, I, I'm keeping my eye on that piece of property. <coughs> so Dang you're it. actually, I guess your company. <coughs> I'm sorry. No, it's, yeah, can't talk if you're coughing, yeah. so I'll wait. No, but the, uh, so your company is actually going to uh, take out the, the money to build the infrastructure and then lease that out. So you're just trying to make sure there's commitments yeah. before you make the investment. Well, Jim Development, uh, with, with uh, Steve Davis as president, is a group of investors that will then invest in the, uh, the development of the, the area. There'll probably be a, a, a different company that will lease out the residential area. There may be another company that will lease out the um, commercial area. Maybe somebody else yet that will re lease out and be responsible for the retail section. So we'll be having other partners that manage that, but we'll be providing the investment to get all of these projects built. Thanks for.